Hey YouTubers, yo buddy Plant. Today I'm gonna try one of the great Belgian beers, uh, Delirium Tremens. Um, a little about this beer. If you're a fan of Belgian beers, you probably know this is up there with the Chimay's as far as most popular Belgian style beer. Um, one of the things it's known for is the great name, Delirium Tremens, which is a kind of effect from alcoholism or when you try to detox you have the what they call the DTs and it's just a great name for a beer and uh, this particular beer is known for being a bigger strong ale 8.5 ABV um, a little backstory on it uh, the brewery uh, is located in an area that's had a working brewery since about the mid 1650s um, the brewery itself in the current incarnation it's been around since about 1906 and they brew a, a line of great beers but uh, delirium tremens is probably the most popular of those and um, got a kind of a classic ceramic bottle look to it and probably is most known and you might see in bars for the pink elephant on there which again is another kind of nod to the D, you know, DTs uh, being kind of out of your mind a little bit. So, without further ado, let's give this beer a try. And this is one of the classic beers that has the kind of cork top. And if you've never opened a bottle of wine, first you twist the cage up top. And then let's undo the cork. And you want to actually hold the cork in place and turn the bottle. That actually might be another future video about how to unpop a champagne bottle. And we're going to put this in a little snifter. Pour this. Oh, that's beautiful. A nice, beautiful, very light tan, whitish head, but a nice head. Golden in color, slight hue of orange. Not cloudy, but a little murky head. It's not totally clear like a Coors Light, Bud Light, Miller Light. Uh, let's give her a sniff. Oh, a lot of malt on the nose. That's uh, something you'll get. Uh, Belgian beers are kind of not known for being hot bombs or whatever. They're on more of the malty side. And you definitely get that on the nose. Oh, yeah. So let's give her a try. Oh, ho, ho, ho. If you haven't heard, this is one of the just great high-rated beers of all time. If you go on Beer Advocate or Rate Beer, one of those websites, Delirium Trimmings is always up there. And part of the reason is, man, there's just a great maltiness to it. It's not, you could tell this beer is just wanting to be a good beer. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel uh, plenty of malt for 8.5 ABV you feel it but it's not a warmer I, I would say classic you know winter warmer in the imperial stout you know kind of big pourer thing but you do feel a little warming but it's still a very drinkable beer nice carbonation level you see we got nice uh, lacing on this. Still a uh, nice little level head. Man, just nice beer. You could tell uh, after one of these, you're probably going to feel and be feeling just right, which actually is part of the reason for this video. Some of you might have already caught, well, man, he seems a little fired up, and he's drinking kind of a big beer. Something must be up. Well, the second half of this video, I want to kind of go on a little rant about nasty guests. Um, most of you all out there know that I'm a bartender out here in Las Vegas. This is what I do for a living. And one of the things that you deal with as a bartender sometimes is nasty customers. And it's just part of the job. Sometimes, you know, people don't tip you or they'll smarmy to you or sometimes you cut them off. You know, they get a little upset. I get it. Professional, been doing this a long time, I get it. But today I had something kind of interesting and I thought I'd share with you guys, just get you a little view of what we deal with as, as 
professional bartenders. So today I come back from my lunch break, a couple of older women, I'm going to say late 60s, around 70s, coming to my bar, or they're at the bar, and the bartender that breaks me is leaving, and they give him a hug, and oh, you're sweet, nice, like, oh, seems like nice women. And I get to talk to them, and they're kind of cordial at first, uh, but one of the things I noticed real early, I can tell they've had a beverage too, that they're feeling a little relaxed. All right, whatever, it's Las Vegas. Then I crack a joke, and one of them says, well, that's a terrible joke. No, no, I'm offended. And I'm like, well, they didn't seem like that type that'd be offended. You kind of come to Vegas, you know, we can kind of work a little blue out here, I'll, I'll say, instead of being a generic corporate restaurant, let's say in mid-America. And I was just kind of thrown back that this one woman was kind of offended. All right, make a note. Now I got to watch their body language and they're making a mess of my bar. I'm like, all right, some, something else is going on. I finally decided, well, I'm going to call that other bartender at the next bar he's working at. I'm going to find out how many he's given. I called him and he said he gave him three beers each. Well, for women that age and that size to have three beers in one hour, well, they, that might be pushing it. And then my cocktail waitress noticed them and said something, hey, I think they might have been smoking a little weed. And I looked in their eyes and I could tell other people's, yeah, that's probably what happened. No uh, no judgment here, just as a professional bartender, I kind of have to know these things. So when one of them asked me for a beer, I said, ladies, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you off. I don't like doing it, but it's part of the job. And I start to give them a little explanation that, hey, we're looking out for you, it's what we do, you know, da, da, da. Well, then I get a, fuck you, buddy. All right. Well, now you just convinced me I did the right thing. So I started telling her, well, you know, hey, it's over. Just let's let it go. Well, then she crossed the line. And, and if you're a bartender, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you should hear this. She took her napkin, wadded it up, literally threw it in my face. Now, it, is it assault or whatever? No. But it's crossing the line. And one thing I like about working in these casinos compared to some of the joints I used to work at is I've always got security. I can always call security. So I get on the phone and I start to call security. Well, she goes, oh, you're calling security. I mean, you're a tough guy. Yes, ma'am, I'm calling security. The party's over. But I need you to close out your check. Man, she's like, oh, you're a tough guy. You're a piece of crap, don't I? And I keep trying to call security. Unfortunately, my phone doesn't work. But anyway, her friend says, hey, we need to close that. Because she can tell I'm not playing anymore. Well, finally, another woman goes, what do I need to do? And I was like, ladies, just cash out and this is all over. Security probably won't even get here in time. Just cash out and go. It's done. Well, then, like a lot of places, we have the little check presenter. And she puts her money in the check presenter. Throws that and he hits me. Now shit's got real. So I finally get on security. I was like, boys, y'all got to come in. Because people throwing shit at me. And they turn and walk off. And it all gets kind of solved eventually. But one of the things, and my cocktail waitress was just petrified at it. She didn't move. But one of the things, she was like, wow, I, I, I couldn't handle that. I never lost cool. I never said, you bitch, or go to hell, or whatever. And more importantly, it never became physical. And part of it was because they're older women. And if it had been men that did that to me, ah, I don't know if I'd have kept my patience. But that's what I kind of want to relate to any of y'all, if y'all are young bartenders out there, is you've got to maintain your cool. It sucks. No one likes people cussing at you or throwing crap at you. And again, you always have the right to physically defend yourself. And again, if I felt threatened, it would be a bit different thing. But again, these are older women. They were literally half my size and twice my age. I didn't feel threatened, so I was able to maintain my cool. But you've got to maintain your cool. You can't snap. It sucks, but that's part of the gig. And in a weird way, after I had time to let the kind of heart rate calm down and we got everybody out, I kind of thought to myself, you kind of handle that cool. Good for you, buddy. And uh, if you're ever in that situation, you just have to think, I'm at work. 
I'm on the clock. They're guest. As long as I'm physically safe, there's no need to lose it. And uh, like I said, for all you young bartenders out there, I just want to impress that on you. And uh, there are certain things. One thing, you know, I had the bar in between me, so you always know you have that at Beria. But just like I said, remember, be professional. And if you're on the other side of the bar, you have no right to throw it, anything at anybody. I, always, I find this world kind of funny. We all get worked up and like, well, this person got elected to this office and I'm mad and I'm this and that and I'm offended by this and that. But yet, people f still feel they can throw something at people or yell, you're a server and I'm the guest, da da da. Just stop, kids. Just stop. Let's be nice to everybody. On that note, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, even though it's uh, past by the time this video comes out. But happy holidays and happy Kwanzaa and whatever you celebrate. And you might want to celebrate with one of these. Well, until next time, bottoms up.